In 2025, the demand for high-quality editors is at an all-time high. And one style that's dominating right now is the Iman Gachi editing style. So today, I'm going to be showing you how you can create two insane high-quality animations inspired by his latest videos. First, you're going to learn how to create a graph animation with a cinematic shatter effect and cool camera movement. And second, you're going to learn how you can create a UI calendar pop-up that looks professional with an event pop-up at the end. In the next 20 minutes, you're about to see brand new effects, brand new concepts, and brand new techniques that are going to be taking your edits to the next level. And if you want more in-depth tutorials on animations like these, I've got a lot of detailed courses inside of the Ultimate Editors community, but more on that later on in the video. So download the project file down below and let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started on animation number one. To start things right, we're going to need to set up a good background. Let's right click and add a solid layer. Then add the radio wave effect. Change the expansion to 7 and the lifespan to 6 seconds. Then let's add a gradient ramp, set it to radiant ramp, set the start here, set the end here. Let's change the start color to a light yellow and the end to a darker yellow. Now let's add a turbulent displace and increase the amount, decrease the size and make the complexity 1. And this looks great. Finally, let's finish it off with the echo effect and then play around with the echo time until we make the lines just slightly thicker. Looks awesome. Let's now add a deep glow and set the exposure to 0.3. And last but not least, we're going to add in a solid layer, add the gradient ramp effect, set it to radial and set the start to a dark yellow and the end to a black. Now this is a very cool background, but let's go ahead and add more to this scene. We're going to start by adding in a shape layer and using our rectangle tool to draw out a rectangle like so and increasing the roundness. Now let's add a gradient ramp, set the start to this gray and the end to a darker gray. Looks great. Now let's duplicate it, remove the gradient ramp and make sure that our rectangle is a black color. Now let's add a light sweep effect, place it over here in the center, increase the width by a lot, change the color to this light yellow and remove the intensity. Now just change the blending mode to add and let's create a smooth rotation by keyframing the direction, moving it back to the beginning, then moving all the way forward and rotating it like so. Finally, let's add a deep glow and this is what we end up with. Let's go ahead and just add a quick subtle light sweep over here and make it very light. Now let's go ahead and make this a bit more interesting. Let's right click and add a solid. Add the Venetian blinds effect, set the transition to 85%. Then duplicate it and set the rotation to 90 degrees. Finally, let's select the rectangle mask and add it here and feather it out like this. To make it white, I just add the invert effect and we get this. Now it's really strong, so I'm going to go ahead and tone it down to the opacity of 10%. And one final thing we can do is animate everything. Let's pair in the light sweep effect to the bottom shape layer. Now let's keyframe the current position, move back and drop it to the bottom. Finally, let's smoothen it out in the graph editor to get this pop-up. All right, I think we created a good background pop-up. Now let's stylize the scene with a few more things. Let's start by adding in a shape layer and let's select our pen tool and draw a shape from here over to here with these two points. Now let's go over to our corner and add a point and smoothen it out like this. Let's remove the fill, add a stroke, add some dashes as well. And now let's animate it by adding the trim paths effect, keyframing the end at 100%, moving forward and have it come all the way down to 0%. Don't forget to smoothen it out in the graph editor. Then let's go ahead and start adding the little details here and there with our text. Start by adding a text layer and writing out the word value. Let's just use a thin font for it. Place it up here, then just duplicate it and place it down here and write out time. This looks great, but it can use a few more titles. Let's add a text layer and write out total value. Use a thicker font for this and place it over here. To spice it up, I'm going to add a quick pop-up animation to it by keyframing the current position, moving back and moving the text back to the left. Then let's keyframe the opacity, move it forward and have it start at zero. After smoothing out the animation in the speed graph, you're going to get this cool effect. Then let's duplicate it and write out a longer sentence, use a lighter font on it and place it right here. With our scene finally set up, it's time to work on our icons. So let me teach you how to make some amazing icon animations. First, let's head over to Flash icon and download an hourglass, money, and a bicep. Let's bring it all over to After Effects. Let's start with our hourglass by adding a gradient ramp, set the start color to a light yellow and the end color to a darker orange. Then let's start by adding a light sweep, increasing the width to 100, changing the color to orange and increasing the edge thickness to 6. Let's drop the sweep intensity and this is going to create a cool edge effect on the icon. Then let's duplicate the light sweep and just add a sweep intensity to it. Then let's move the center to the left, keyframe it, move forward and move the sweep to the right side. Now just copy these effects and paste them on the other two. 
and there we go let's make these all smaller place our hourglass over here place the money over here place the bicep over here awesome now let's start by keyframing the position of our hourglass and moving back and moving the hourglass down a little then let's keyframe the current opacity and move it forward and just have it start at zero finally let's smoothen it all out in the graph editor and this is what we get let's now add a text layer and write out money I was supposed to write out time, but whatever. Let's move it over to here and place it right here. Now let's also create the same pop-up animation on our text as well. And this looks great. Now let's copy our pop-up animation and paste it on this icon here. Then don't forget to move it up here and paste it again on our third animation and move it up to here. Then let's duplicate the text and place it right. Then let's duplicate it again and place it here and write out effort. And there you go. This all looks awesome. But you know what else looks awesome? That subscribe button if you click it and make it go red. Now let's add a shape layer and using our pen tool, let's draw out a shape like this. Then we delete the fill and add a stroke of seven. Then to animate it, we add trim paths and drop the end to zero, keyframe the start at zero, move forward and bring it all the way up. And finally, let's select both of these, head into our graph editor and make them start quick and slow down. To color this thing, let's add in a gradient tramp, set the start to yellow, set the end to orange. And finally, I'm gonna pre-compose it and add a rectangle mask like so and increase the feather to to make it fade out perfect now the final part to make our shatter effect we're gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer and add the shatter effect to it set the pattern to glass set the extrusion to 0.1 move it over our first icon and set the strength of force 2 to 2 and set the viscosity to 0.7 and finally set the gravity to 0 also set the strength of force 1 to 2 and finally we're just going to increase the amount of repetitions and now let's duplicate it three times for each icon i'll align the second one with when the line meets our money icon and i'll align the third one with when our line meets the bicep. Now, don't forget to move our second shatter to where the money icon is and the third shatter to where the bicep icon is. Make sure you pre-compose each of the layers with its adjustment layer and there you go, you have the shatter effect created. The last step is to add some declo to this icon here, set the exposure to 0.3, then just paste it on the other two icons and also just add it to the align animation. And there we go, our animation is complete, but now it's finally time to add in our camera movement. So for this camera movement, I'm making everything into individual scenes instead of one continuous movement. So I'm gonna add in a single note camera, then let's make a cut on two seconds, and then we're gonna make a cut on four seconds, and then let's cut after our three icon animations reveal. And let's finally cut after our line animation shatters them all. For scene one, we're gonna to bring the camera back, keyframe the position and move forward and bring it forward into the shape layer. Then smoothen out the animation. For scene two, let's move our camera over to here, keyframe this position, move forward and drop it down to here. Smoothen this one out as well. Then for scene three, we're going to move the camera over to here, keyframe it, move forward and have it end on the right here. Also smoothen this one out. And for scene four, we're now going to show our icons by starting the camera at this position, keyframing it and moving all the way to the end and ending the camera on our last icon. Smoothen this one out as well. And for the big one, scene five, let's start the camera down here where the line starts, keyframe it right here and move forward where the line animation finishes and have the camera end up here. Smoothen it out. And this is what we finally end up with. Now, if you're an editor and you wanna be able to create animations like these, I've got something for you. For the past year, I've been building a program to help editors become the highest quality editors on the market and make their first thousand dollars in just 90 days. Here's exactly how it works. On days one till 30, we're going to master Premiere Pro and After Effects through 100 plus courses covering everything from fundamentals to advanced techniques. Because we first need to make you an expert in the programs before we teach you the editing styles that are gonna make you money. Then on days 30 to 60, we're going to learn seven viral editing styles, short form styles like Devin Jatho, Ali Abdal, By Maximize and Houston Cold, as well as long form styles like Iman Gaji, My Editing Style and more animation focused editing styles. And these are the editing styles that set you apart as an editor and make clients want to pay you to edit their videos. And lastly, from days 60 to 90, we're going to build your personal brand with our proven system and post high quality content for 21 days, designed to land you multiple clients fast. So within just 90 days, you will have mastered the industry standard tools, learned seven different editing styles and made your first thousand dollars as an editor. Don't believe me? Check out these wins from our students because they are crushing it. So click the link down below to join Ultimate Editors, to master video editing, master seven different editing styles and make your first thousand dollars with video editing in just 90 days. But with this being said, let's get straight into animation number two.
since we're going to be copying a Google UI, I went ahead and imported a picture of Google's dark mode. Then I added a solid as a background and added a gradient trap. Then using my eyedropper tool, I selected the background color for Google for both the start and the end. And lastly, I just darkened them slightly to create a gradient. Now to create the Google logo, I added a text layer and wrote out the word Google. Now just scale it up like this, then let's select the G and use the eyedropper tool to select the blue G. Then do the same thing for the O, same thing for the second O, same thing for the G, same thing for the L, and same thing for the E. Now let's go ahead and create a search bar by adding a shape layer, and using our rectangle we draw out a rectangle and round off the edges as much as possible. Then let's just change the color to the one from Google. As an extra touch of detail, I add in a mic icon and place it right here. Then I add a gradient ramp to it and set the start to white and the end to gray. Finally, I'm going to add a text layer and write out search or type web address. Then just use a thin font, place it here, and drop the opacity to 35%. A few final touches we can add before we finish this is first, let's add a text animation for the word Google by keyframing the current position, moving forward and dropping the text down, keyframing the opacity going from zero to 100 and smoothing out the animation in the graph editor. And this is the same pop-up animation we have been making so far. Then I parent the text here to the mic, then the mic to the shape layer. This way everything is controlled by the shape layer. Then I create the same pop-up animation using this shape layer here. Great, we now have an animated Google UI. Let's go ahead and add the search animation for ultimate editors. All we gotta do is just make a cut right here, change the new text layer to ultimate editors and make sure that we use a thicker font and bring the opacity all the way up. Finally, head over to animation composer and let's add this animation right here. Now let's go ahead and move on to scene two. So first let's make everything a 3D layer except the background and move it to the top. Since we're gonna be copying a calendar UI, let's import the Google calendar here. And now let's make a very cool looking calendar. Let's start by adding a shape layer and increasing the roundness. Add a gradient ramp and set the start and end color to the calendar colors. Let's make one of them way darker and there we go. Now let's duplicate the shape layer, delete the gradient ramp and make its color black. Let's add a light sweep, place it right here, increase the width and drop the sweep intensity. Then keyframe the current direction, place a keyframe at the beginning and then rotate like so and move that keyframe all the way to the end. Now just change the blending mode to add and add a deep glow to it and this looks very clean. Now we add a light sweep effect to the main shape layer but just just increase the width and make it light. Now let's go ahead and add more details like the Mac icons up here. Let's go ahead and add a shape layer and using our circle mask, we create a circle up here, set the color to a light red, then just duplicate it and move it to the right and change its color to a light yellow. Then just duplicate it again and move it to the right again and change its color to a light green. Then simply add a deep glow to one of them and duplicate it to the other two. Amazing. Now let's go ahead and get started on our calendar. This is going to be quite the time consuming process. First, let's go ahead and add a shape layer. Then using our pen tool, let's create a line like this. Then let's add a light stroke to it, add the trim pass function, and then keyframe the start at 0%, move forward and change it to 100%. Smooth it out in the graph editor to get this line animation. Now let's duplicate it four different times and just spread them out across the calendar as evenly as possible. Now yes, there is a faster way to do this with the grid, but it's going to look a lot better this way. Finally, don't forget to offset them like so, and you're going to get this cool line animation. Now let's duplicate one of them and rotate it 90 degrees, then just place it like so. Duplicate it six times, then spread them all out over the horizon horizontal axis like so. Don't forget to offset them and this is what you're going to get. Amazing. Now let's go ahead and pre-compose all these different layers together and using our rectangle let's draw a mask over all of them and increase the feather to get this smooth effect. Great. Now we have a calendar. Let's go ahead and fill it in. Let's add in a text layer and write out January 2025. Place it right over here and add a text animation from Animation Composer. Then add a deep glow to it and set the exposure to 0.01 something very light. Let's start filling this in. Let's add a new text layer and write out Mun for Monday, then use the lighter font and place it over here. Let's also keyframe the current opacity and move back and drop it down to zero. Now we're just gonna duplicate it and change the duplicate to two for Tuesday and do the same thing for the rest of the days of the week. Finally, let's spread them out across the entire calendar like so and awesome. Now we're just gonna offset them a little bit to get this cool reveal. Now let's get started on our numbers. First, we're gonna duplicate this layer and write out zero, 01. Then just place it down here. Now this text already has all the effects on it since we just duplicated it. So all we have to do is duplicate it again and move it to the right and write out zero, 02. And do this for the entire row over here. Now once we have our first row, we could just select all of them duplicate them and bring them down to the second row. Then we can just go through and change all the numbers to our newer numbers. Let's duplicate it again, move it down and change all the numbers again. And there we go. We now have a calendar. One smart thing I'll do is I'll offset all the numbers by just one frame. And this is going to create a cool wave reveal effect. And finally, let's pre-compose the numbers and days together. Perfect. Let's now get started on scene number three with our calendar event pop-up. Let's start by adding a shape layer and drawing out a rectangle over here. Let's add a little roundness to it and let's start coloring it. 
First, we're going to add a gradient ramp, set the start here and the end here, change the start color to a darker blue and the end color to a light blue. Then let's add a text layer and write out the words new event and change the color to a light blue. Great. Now let's parent the text layer to the shape layer, keyframe the position, move back, drop it down and smoothen it out in the graph. Then don't forget to add your opacity keyframe to make it fade in for this quick simple pop-up. Now to create our cursor animation, we import this cursor over here. Don't forget to add a gradient ramp to it, set the start to white and the end to gray. Now we're going to just scale it down a lot and let's keyframe the position, place it off the screen over here, and then we're going to move forward and place it on top of the event. Then using our pen tool, let's add a point here and make the path like this. Smoothen this out in the graph editor and you're going to get this cool animation. Now to create our click animation, we keyframe the scale, move forward, and make it change to 4. Then move forward and bring it back up to 6 then just easy ease the keyframes. Now this looks cool, but we also need the event to simulate a click. So we keyframe the current scale, move forward and make it slightly smaller, then move forward again and bring it back to its original size and just easy ease this. Looks great. Now let's get to work on our fourth and final scene. Let's start by adding a shape layer and using our rectangle tool, let's draw out a rectangle right here. Then let's make the edges more round and add a gradient ramp, set the end to a darker gray and you're good. Then duplicate it, remove the gradient ramp and make it black. Copy the light sweep effect we made for the calendar and paste it right here. Change the color to an orange, then change the blending mode to add and add a deep glow. Now honestly, I think blue fits this animation better. So let's then add the ultimate editor's logo over here. And now we're going to add a light sweep effect on it and set the color to light blue as well. And this looks great. Now let's go ahead and add in our event details. Let's add a text layer and write out ultimate editors. Then let's keyframe the current position, move back and bring it back to the left side. Smoothen out the animation like this, then keyframe the opacity, move the keyframe to here and have it start at zero. Now we're going to duplicate the layer and write out a longer description, but use a thinner font. Scale it down and then using my anchor point, I'll move it over to here. Now we add a shape layer and create a line over here with a stroke of one. And don't forget to offset them like so. Now let's duplicate this text, write out 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. and use the anchor point to move it over to here. Then duplicate it, drop it down and write out Thursday the 19th and use the anchor point to bring it back to here. Let's duplicate it again and write out reschedule here with a random HTTPS link. Then let's select the link and change the color to blue. Now let's add the shape layer, draw out a rectangle like so, add a grid gradient ramp and set it to blue for now. Let's round off the edges and let's just add a text and write out join now. Then just add a gradient ramp, set the start here and the end here and change the end color to a light blue to get this cool effect. Now let's make the start of our shape layers gradient ramp to a dark blue and the end to this color to get this cool button. Now let's parent the text layer to the shape layer below it and create the same pop-up animation with position and opacity. Finally, let's make everything look better with some glows. Start by adding a deep glow to this text at an exposure of 0.1, then add a deep glow to the button at the bottom to get this cool effect. Then back in the first scene, let's add the same deep glow to the Google text. And finally, with our animation set up, let's go ahead and get started on our camera movement. Let's set all these layers to 3D except the background, of course. And now we're going to move our calendar down to the bottom here so that it looks like it's under our Google search. And now we can add our one node camera in and start creating the scene. Let's make a cut when I start to search up for ultimate editors, make a cut before our calendar animation starts and make a cut after our calendar animation and make a cut as soon as our event pop-up happens. Let's start by keyframing the position, moving it to the end, then having the camera start zoomed out. Smoothen it out in the graph editor and that's it for scene one. For scene two, we're going to angle the camera like so over here, then keyframe it at the beginning over here, move forward and have it end with a focus on the text written. Then we're going to smoothen it out. For scene three, I want to just keyframe the position here, move it back, and then just pan down over to my calendar and then just smoothen it out. And now for scene four with the event, let's just start a zoom in over here, then keyframe the current position, move the keyframe back, move forward, and then move the camera to the top a little for a smooth pan. Then finally for scene five, I just duplicated the first camera movement from here and place it here and just extended it to get a smooth zoom in. And with that being said, this officially completes animation number two. And this is what we end up with after one one hour of animating. Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching all the way till the end of the video. I'm super, super grateful to see you guys make it all the way over to here. There's only 5% of you that do. So thanks a lot for making that happen. We're now posting really, really consistently. So I'll see you guys on the next upload, whether that be Wednesday or Saturday. Make sure you like the video if you did enjoy it and comment something down below so I can know that you did enjoy it. Don't forget to do yourself a favor. Check out Ultimate Editors down below because the price is going to be increasing soon. And God bless all of you guys. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you next time.